Before we start this video, a large thank you to Harlot, Fred, Joakim, Bob, Brandon, Chris, Akubi, Picketing, and Big Sow for their support on Patreon. I hope you guys enjoy the video. And an immense thank you to Halo Burner and Mr. Fox Gaming for their continued support to the channel this month on Patreon. It is very much so, notice gentlemen, and I hope you enjoy the video. Hello everybody, and I want to talk about something today called in-scene placed network objects. What is this? Let's take a look. So it says here, basically, these objects will spawn on the network after they've been placed in the scene. So typically they're used for world objects that are spawned in the scene and easier than spawning dynamically. Uh, so I didn't know about this until actually just yesterday. So this is a great thing to do for something like a fog wall. So we're going to do this today. And I guess you could do this for monsters too if you only have one set of monsters. When I say that, I mean if you're not randomly spawning different kinds of monsters. So let's go ahead and go to our fog wall here and drag it in where the fog wall object spawner is. And we're going to remove the object spawner and position our fog wall where we want it in the world because this is going to save us uh, a lot of trouble down the line for different kinds of interactables like doors and such. And I'm actually in the process of using this in Nephilim for many things, not for character spawns, because I do have random character spawns too, but definitely for fog walls and things that are always static. So let's go over here now to the uh, the game. And if you jump in here, you can see it does not work because a network object has not spawned. So there's something else you need to do. What you need to do is actually load the scene using the network manager instead of just using the scene manager. So if we go to our world save game manager, and by the way, I'm going to link the documentation below. I encourage you to definitely read it uh, so you understand what's happening. You can see here we have our lo load world scene. Um, and we do this here using load operation. Uh, yeah, 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 load scene asynchronistically. We're going to change it to a void and not a coroutine. And we're going to just simply load the scene using the uh, network manager. And in the future, we can call upon on scene loaded to toggle and disable um, our loading screen when we get around to making that. So we don't need it to be asynchronistic right now for the loading screen and such. Uh, but that will come in the future. Let's not worry about that right now. Let's just load the scene. So what you do is you say network manager dot singleton dot scene manager uh, dot load scene. And then you want to pass the scene string name and you want to pass the load scene method. So we can get the string name uh, by requiring this to use an int for the build index. And I know I'm going very fast right now, but I encourage you to read the documentation if you want even before you watch the video. Uh, but I will explain as I go why we need to do this. So string game, or I'm gonna call this world scene, is equal to scene management, or scene utility, sorry, dot get scene path by build index, we pass the build index, and then we can pass the world scene string here, and the load scene method is going to be load scene dot single. So we need to load the scene from the network manager like this, or we can't take advantage of the, uh, the in-world network objects that are just loaded into the scene. And then we go back here to new game and load game, we pass the world scene index, and we're good to go. So I don't think it uh, actually specifies in the steps that you need to do this, but if you read more of the documentation, it does say so. So now if we go back into the scene here, you can see the network object is spawned. There's no spawn button and it has a an object ID and all that such. So if we go over now, make sure your enable scene management is ticked on your world network manager. I believe it is by default, but just make sure it is or else this will not work. Very important note. And uh, now we're going to test it on our client to make sure that it is spawned. And yes, it is. You can see here, this is the client view. Uh, right here, you can see it has spawned, but we do have an error. So let's go to the, this isn't anything to do what we just did, but if we go to the uh, the AI boss character manager, if the boss has been awakened, we shouldn't be playing an action animation because that is a server RPC. We should be just playing an animation using animator.play. Uh, that will still get rid of the error and now it will work as it was intended to. So we save that and we're good to go. Now, if we go over, you can see uh, this is working in the client, it has spawned. So let's go to our fog wall now. And let's actually make this fog wall operational using uh, an interactable object. So we're going to use the interactable system we made in the last video. So if we go to the fog wall, let's make it derive from interactable. And we're going to get some errors because we're using on network spawn and on network despawn. So let's go to the interactable script then. And let's make this derive from a network behavior. So if I go here and search for interactable in the project, model behavior becomes a network behavior, which is still just also a model behavior, but has some other cool things uh, that network objects can use. So now nothing in the fog wall script is broken and now we can add on to it. So I'm going to duplicate the fog wall uh, collider and call it interactable collider. Now I'm going to show you how I do it. And again, there's like 50 ways to do this. First off, add the interactable collider to the list of things in the fog wall. I'm going to make this interactable collider fairly small. I'm going to make the fog wall also a little bit smaller as well. And I'm going to change my view here so I can see. I want the interactable collider to come just before the fog wall. So 
the blue arrow would be forward, by the way, so it would come before that, so behind the fog wall, which means to the left of the blue arrow. Now, when we interact with this interactable collider, what I'm going to do is allow the character to walk through the fog wall temporarily, and I'll explain how we're going to do that in a bit, but make sure it lines up kind of like this. I'm going to disable the particles so we can see it. So here is my fog wall collider, and you can see to the left is my interactable collider. So that is an ideal setup for what I'm going to do. And you can make a fog wall a billion different ways. This is how I'm going to do it. So if you want to do it your own way, that's totally cool. Interactable text is, uh, text is going to be passed through. And I'm going to drag in the interactable collider, set the layer to interactable, and set it to is a trigger. I'm also going to enable that collider. Likewise, I'm going to enable the collider on the fog wall because now we actually want to block something from passing through. In the previous video, it wasn't actually there. It was just kind of the effect of having it there. So make sure the colliders are enabled. Now, I'm going to add a rigid body on the parent object of this fog wall so we can actually use the interactable collider and it will trigger an interaction uh, as discussed in the last video. Now, if I go through here, the fog wall will pop up. I'm going to kind of pause the game real quick and I'm going to disable Dirk so he doesn't beat the life out of me while I'm trying to go through this. Now, if I go over to the fog wall, we should get an interactable text. I just want to verify that that is working. So if I approach this real quick here now, it should say pass through and it does. Now, it's kind of over Dirk's health bar, so I'm just going to adjust that very quickly by going to the UI object. I know I'm going very fast, guys. If I am going too fast, please let me know in the comments. Uh, I just want to get a lot of mileage out of the videos as much as I can. So I'm going to change the position of this to like 180, save that so it's not popping up over the health bar. That's kind of ugly. Now I'm going to go back to the fog wall interactable. I'm going to override interact, which is the interact method on our base class, interactable. And now here's where we want to plug in some logic. So one, what do we want to do here? Let's, let's make some fake code. One, face the fog wall. You always want to face the fog wall. Two, I want to disable collision with the fog wall. That's very important as well. We want to temporarily allow the player to pass through the fog wall. Uh, three, I want to walk through the fog using animation. And then four, I want to re-enable the collisions after I have walked through the fog wall. So pretty simple. All right, we can do the first one immediately, uh, which is some very, very easy code. We just want to get the position of the fog wall the way it's facing. Remember, it's a blue arrow. That will be the forward direction when we were in the inspector if you go to the prefab. So we know we want our character to face towards the fog wall. So that will be look rotation vector three dot forward. So it will be quaternion target rotation is equal to vector three look rotation dot forward. All right, so that's it. And we want to actually apply that rotation to the character. We do that by saying player dot transform dot rotation is equal to target rotation, and we can save that. And again, sorry, that's supposed to be vector three dot forward, not minus vector three dot forward. So just like that. Now, let's actually make sure. Yes, yeah, so we are interacting and we are disabling the interactable collider. That's totally cool because when you pass through a fog wall, you shouldn't be able to pass through it again. So if we disable the collider, that's fine. Basically, going into a boss room should be a permanent thing. You can't leave the way you came in anyway. So that's okay. Now we pass through, we face it. It snaps our character towards the fog wall. Cool. If you want to do it a bit smoother, you could do a coroutine so it rotates and you know, towards the fog wall over time, it would look a little bit nicer. But for now, that's great. We're going to move on to the next part. Now it's disable collisions with the fog wall on all clients. So the client on one player screen doesn't get stuck. What I mean is if I play an animation from walking through and I don't disable the colliders on your game for my character, you're just going to see me walking into the fog wall. So what we need to do is make a server RPC and make sure that on everybody's game, the colliders are disabled for this character who's trying to walk through. So I'm going to make a server RPC with require ownership equal false. What does that mean? Well, obviously this object is not owned by a client. It's always owned by the host because the host is the server. So when I say server RPC require ownership equals false, we can call this from any client even if we don't own the object. I'm gonna call this uh, server RPC allow player through fog wall colliders server RPC. I'm also gonna make a comment here that says when a server RPC does not require ownership, a non-owner can basically activate this. So again, if I join your game, I'm not the owner of this fog wall. You are because it's your game and the server owns it. You are the server. I can still activate this server RPC for my client object, even though I don't own it. If we make sure require ownership does not equal true. All right, what do we need this uh, function to require? Well, we need an oolong um, player object ID. That's how we're going to get the player object and reference it from the spawn manager. And uh, that's it. So what we're going to do here is copy this, paste it, change server RPC to client RPC. So you're going to say, hey, I'm going to ping the server. And if you are the server, I want you to run this client RPC, which effectively runs on everybody's game. And then we're going to allow this specific player through this fog wall collider. So how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to get a copy of the spawn manager. But first, we need to reference the player manager variable by saying player is equal to network manager dot singleton 
dot spawn manager dot spawn objects player object id dot get component player manager cool what's next well if that doesn't equal null we need to do some stuff so let's check to make sure that doesn't equal null if we did find a player successfully we want to run a coroutine now why are we doing a coroutine because we can run some logic and then reverse it after some time so i'll show you what i mean so let's say start coroutine i'll leave it blank for now because we don't have it let's make our coroutine let's call it private i enumerator um, disable collisions for a time or for time. And we're going to make that require a player manager. And I'm just going to say start coroutine, disable collisions for a time. We're going to pass our newly found player. Again, let's make this require a player manager. And now this is super straightforward. Um, what we're going to do is basically disable collisions with the fog wall collider. Wait for a moment. The moment needs to be the exact length of the animation and then re-enable the collisions. Because when we play this animation, we're locked into it, we're interacting so we can't control our character while the animation is playing out. Ideally, you want to make your character um, invulnerable while this is happening too, so you can't take damage, you get knocked out of it, that'd be kind of awkward. So we're going to say physics.ignoreCollision player, and we pass the fog wall collider, which doesn't exist yet, and then we're going to say yield return new wait for seconds. Now again, this Wait time should be the exact time of your animation. This will differ depending on what kind of animation you're using. I'm going to link an animation below for patrons for free to use. It's just a walk cycle. It's been extended a little bit. So go ahead and use that. I'm just going to say three seconds. Again, you're going to want to tune this depending on the animation. So then we're going to say true as in yes, enable collisions. And then after that, false. Now let's make a variable for the fog wall collider. I'm just going to make a header up here called collision. I'm then going to make a serializable field and a variable of type collider. I'm going to call this fog wall collider. All right, so if I scroll back down here now, that's still giving me an error. What's wrong? Did I spell it wrong? No, I didn't reference this as a variable type of collider. It's a game object. That's my bad. So that should be collider. And now we come in here. It's still going to give us an error because we need to say player dot character controller. The character controller is also treated as a collider, so we can reference that here. True means yes, we do ignore collisions. False means no, we no longer ignore collisions. And three seconds is a time before both. All right, cool. So now we got the disable collisions. And this, since this is on a client RPC, it will sync across the network. That's great. Now let's call this right here, like so. Pass our player dot network object ID. Cool. All right. So now this uh, this really accounts for the re-enable collisions portion too. As for the walk through the fog wall, we're going to want to play an animation. So we're going to say player dot player animator manager dot play target action animation. And we want to play whatever animation we're going to have. So I'm going to call mine pass through fog 01 true as in we are interacting. We cannot get knocked out of this animation. Again, you definitely want to enable uh, either through animation events or code invulnerability on this animation until it's over. So I'm going to save that. Hey, it's future Seb. Totally forgot to add a sound effect and make the character invulnerable. So we're going to do that right here, right now. Just going to basically play a sound effect on this client RPC here. So it plays globally for everybody who's around it. Also, we're going to add an audio source to the fog wall so it can do that and reference that audio source on awake. The invulnerability thing is quite easy. Just do the same thing you do with roll place it at the start of the fog animation. And then when it goes back to the empty state, it will automatically disable the is invulnerability. And then down here, we're going to make a header for client RPC so the game won't give us an error. We're going to save it again. And now I'm going to drop my animation here. Uh, so again, I have one linked in the description of this video. If you are a patron, you can go ahead and download it. If not, use any animation you can find. Just honestly, a walk cycle is fine. Uh, I'm going to just edit this so it's not going to end too early. And there you go. So if you have uh, any of the animation packs from our store page too, just use walk forward. It'll be fine. I'm going to drag in the colliders here and this prefab. And I'm going to go ahead and save this prefab. So it's all set up good and override the prefab in the project. Looks good. Now, if I go in here, pause the game, going to temporarily disable Dirk, because not bash my head in. I'm going to cheat and drag my player backwards out of this fog wall, like so. And now, if I approach this, I should pass through it. So let's see. Yes, I do. Perfect. Cool. And I should be able to not exit. And no, I can't. There we go. I'm trapped in here. Excellent. So that works well on a single player. Now let's try two. I want to make sure that it works for the client and you don't have that weird effect where you see them walking to the wall without being able to pass through. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, again, do the same thing. I'm going to, well, that's not Dirk. That's the dummy. I'm just going to disable Dirk real quick. I'm not sure if this breaks the boss event. It shouldn't. No, it doesn't. Cool. All right. So 
now that I'm out here, I'm going to go to scene view and on my second monitor, I'm just going to go ahead and see if this uh, character is going to walk through and I'll keep it on the host view so you can see. So again, I'm going through the fog wall and oh, it's a host only interactable. So let me turn that off. There we go. Try it again. Ah, there we go. Cool. Working as intended. So there you go. And I can't leave anymore. I can pass through working as intended. Cool. So now you guys have a way to actually pass through the fog walls, more cinematic. It's cool. It actually locks you in the boss room. Uh, I love the interaction system because you can really do anything you want with it. And before we go to, let's quickly go to the fog wall interactable and let's disable uh, host only interactable because that's not a host only interactable. So now we're going to get into some cool stuff like items and actually, you know, changing out your gear. Uh, we're going to start and keep it very simple by doing the weapon cycles. And then we're going to move on to some like armor equipment and all that good stuff. Now, if there's anything you'd like to see before that, that you deem is more important to the core game loop, like maybe you want to see leveling up first. Uh, see, I'll, I'll let you guys decide. Would you rather see leveling up first or just getting some equipment on and changing your equipment out through some basic UI menus? Please let me know in the comments or in the Discord. Bring up in the chat. I will go into whichever direction you guys deem as more important or fun to establishing the core game loop or adding on to it. Uh, but yeah, guys, thank you very much for joining me. That's all. Um, I hope you all have a lovely weekend and a shout out to my patrons. Quite obviously, it is because of all of you lovely individuals I get to keep doing this and I do love doing this. So again, sound off either in the comments or at me on Discord on what you would prefer to see first, equipping items or leveling up and all that good stuff. I'm also probably going to uh, put together a demo scene, uh, just a mock scene through some like, you know, basic level and environment setup. And I'm going to do a little uh, a little show off of what we've established so far in terms of uh, content for the series. Just a quick one minute video. Um, I will make a mock up level for that. So I'm, I didn't plan on touching on, on level design, but if you want uh, to see that as something I could maybe do as a bonus at some point, I will gladly do that. I'm just going to set up something very basic to showcase what we've done so far. Use some models from the asset store, et cetera, et cetera. Anyway, at this point, I am rambling, so I will see you all next week. Have a lovely weekend.